Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. I'm a concierge high-performance psychologist providing luxury-level support to executives, entrepreneurs, celebrities, and athletes. With me today, I have Dave Roberts. He's a teacher, the co-author of the book, When the Psychology Professor Met the Minister, and a Bereavement Support Specialist. I also have Kevin Wash. He's a coach, mentor, author, trainer, and speaker, running a consultancy business specializing in sales for international property development. Finally, I have Gary Fredericks. He's the CEO of On Point Partners, where they provide back office services for small businesses. The question today, what does communication actually mean? Gary, kick us off. Communication means that you have a, re uh, a transmitter and a receiver. Somebody is speaking and somebody is listening. And if you don't have a transmitter or a receiver, there is no communication. I do a lot of training for communication in, in businesses. Today's world, a lot of people don't listen. They're already formulating their response to what person is saying before the person finishes their comments. So there's a lot of uh, missed communication going on today. Mm. I think, um, I have to say, I agree with a lot of what Gary says. We, I've got similar kind of words going through my mind. I think that communication is the art of transmitting thoughts, physically, verbally, or non-physically, um, where two sides will listen. But the key to it is exactly as Gary just said, really, is listening to understand, not listening to respond, which is a real challenge for some people, because you can tell while you're trying to communicate, they're really not listening. They're waiting for the noise to cease so they can come in with theirs. Um, I saw a great quote, actually, and it's, I think it sums it up for me about communication. And it says, discussions are always better than arguments because an argument is to find out who is right and a discussion is to find out what is right. And I thought, yeah, that's communication. I mean, one of the things, just to dovetail off of what Kevin said, I think one of the things that, that for me means that communication is effective is the consistency between our nonverbal actions and our verbal actions. A lot of times we'll respond more to nonverbals initially than we will to verbal. So it's important for that to be consistent. The other thing, and this is going to be stated in the obvious, but I think in terms of what Gary said with the transmitter and the receiver, the message has to be clearly understood by the receiver. And the message has to be presented in a way that I think is concise, easily understood. And not only is it easily understood, but we get verbal verification that it has been understood. And my other thing with communication, and this is that it, it's devoid of character assassination, where I think character assassination communications, when we're attacking somebody for their beliefs, I think destroys existing relationships and prevents new ones from starting. I think effective communication also builds effective relationships and builds bridges around people with, with different perspectives. Hmm. So who do you think is responsible for making sure that the communication is understood? Because that's one thing we're talking about. Communication is the understanding of transmitted and received information. Is it the person doing the listening or the person doing the speaking who's responsible for making sure the communication is actually understood? It's both. Yeah. I think the person who is speaking obviously has a perspective and they're trying to get their message across, but... Yeah, I oftentimes will try to repeat what the person says, and I could be wrong. How I've taken that message could be wrong, but it's my job to make sure that I understand what they're what they're talking about just as much as it's their job to try to communicate. Yeah. In fact, you can't communicate well without two people being, you know, involved and invested in it. Yeah, I would agree with what uh, Gary's saying. I think again, another key part of communication is being open to somebody else's opinions, their cultural differences, and accepting them, really having no prejudice. So to allow them to explain what their point is, even if you disagree with it, but you should still listen, respect what they're saying, and then form your response. Let, let's think about a communication. Like if you're on a cell phone, there's a bad connection. There's always somebody who cares more about the communication and is willing to fight through a bad connection where the other person may be like, I don't care that much, let's just get off the phone. Yeah. And I feel like that happens in most communications. The person who cares the most is the one who is going to make the effort to make sure it's understood. The challenge is when there's a bias on one side and you think you know what they said. I do a speaking engagement that's called what, why what you said is not what they heard. And I think yes. that happens yeah. pretty often. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. I agree with that. That's a common thing. I train that to a lot of people. Sometimes what you say and what the other person hears are completely different. 
But again, I'm, I think body language comes into it massively. I mean, I'm, I'm currently in Cairo, so my Arabic is pretty limited, but I make a point every day of learning one or two words and expressions so I can talk to people. But it's really how friendly they can see that I'm making an effort. I'm smiling. My body language is very yeah. open and they're really open yeah. to communicating with me. So we may be having two completely different conversations, but we're enjoying the interaction. And so even though our communication isn't necessarily great, it's an engagement between two human beings. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and I think to, to dovetail off of what both Gary and Kevin are saying, active listening, I think it's res the responsibility of both the receiver and the transmitter to ensure that the message is being understood. And with active listening, you can do that. We can, we can do active listening to get clarification of what's being said to maybe understand or uh, verbalize our any any type of perceived differences that we have. And I think it's the, the responsibility of both to happen. And I think when one person isn't interested, if the transmitter is more interested in communicating um, their message, I think you can use active listening and, and reflect back to say, it appears that you don't really appear to be interested in, in hearing what I have to say or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. There'd be a better time where you're going to we'd be more receptive where we can talk about that. Because the other thing is there may be other stuff going on with the receiver that's causing them to be distracted at that moment not being willing to hear feedback, not being willing to hear different points of view. So I think we can use active listening to get some clarification and maybe set up an agreement at another time where the message might be more likely to be received. We'll go into a company and do uh, disc assessments and everybody says, well, what do we have to do this for? My comment is because you're going to be able to communicate much better with a person if you know how they handle these work situations. Everybody's different. Everybody handles them a different way. So the just having a little bit of a background on this person and how they do what they do and how they think how they think is going to make communication more effective. And usually by the time we're finished, they say, you're right. It, it does it does help. Everybody we can go down the rabbit hole of, of assessments. I always right. come out in the middle and I'm like, I'm a chameleon. I can do whatever you want. It's not, it's fine. And I, they send it out. Yep. In the middle. Sure enough. So the, the question I have then, if there's a miscommunication. You realize you tried to communicate something or something was tried to communicate to you. It didn't work. Is there value in kind of doing an assessment of what happened and why the miscommunication happened? Or is it just fix it and move on? I think fix it and move on is important, but I think you need to understand what caused the issue so you don't replicate it and repeat it. Um, so I think to take some people sometimes don't take the time to understand what the cause is. They're just looking for the solution because they're too busy in this wonderfully crazy fast world that we live in. But if you don't actually take time to understand what put you in that situation, you can find yourself in that situation again and again. So I think before you fix things, just take a couple of minutes to understand what caused it. And is cause blame? I don't necessarily think so. Not to me. No, I look at it as opportunities for improvement, just from the organizational management perspective, is what can we do to make our communication better? If it's from an organizational perspective, it's if it's communication between members of an organization, between management, upper level management and middle management or other individuals in the organization, what can we do to make it better? And what are some opportunities for us to improve our processes? And I also think even if it's individual communication, self-reflection is, is, I think, is always good after every communication in terms of what do we do well, what could we have done better, whether it's for a presentation or whether it's just meeting one-on-one -on -one with somebody. I do think I've gotten much better at it over the years of just practicing and wanting to get better, wanting to be better at it. I think I've become more willing, more patient. What I say matters. And if I may say I'm speaking clearly, I'm, I'm speaking clearly to you. Why are you not understanding me? That's on me. Yeah, I think sometimes you know, when what I do, if people really aren't listening and you can tell the obvious signs when they, they leave the room or they sit reading a book or they turn their computer on or they turn their back to you. Um, I, I, I change language and just and just see what happens. So I might be communicating with someone in English, knowing they're not listening to anything. Then I'll just start speaking in Spanish. And at the end of it, I'll say, are we clear with everything? Are we good? And I know they haven't listened to a single word that I've said. <laughs> There's no way, because I know they can't speak another language. And you just think, mm, I've got a challenge here. My ex-husband one time fired up a chainsaw, walked away from me and yelled over his shoulder, I'm listening, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that is our I, 10 minutes. Thank you so much for having this conversation about communication with me. I think we did a pretty good job communicating and I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon.